Amen. Welcome to everyone tonight. If you are a guest tonight, glad to have you. If you're joining us online tonight, we welcome you as a part of this service as well. Pray that you're blessed by it. Bishop is traveling. We give honor to him tonight and his travels. And Mother Wright is present tonight. We give honor to her. Praise God. I, I'm, I'm going to try to get all this out of the way right now. I am, I can say confidently, I am more at peace with who I am and what I am than I've ever been in my life. That's not to say, that's not to say sometimes there's still a little bit to work through. I say that to say because I'm just going to try the best of my ability just to just to be me tonight. And I feel like I'm not in a hurry. It's early. I'm not in a hurry. I really feel like the Lord has given me something to share. And it's also my hope. Uh, please duly note this in case it doesn't happen. At least you will know my intentions. I know there are a lot of folks that are going to be very involved the next several days. There's a Young Ministers Fellowship Saturday a lot of you are a part of. This is a very busy weekend. I, I, it is my desire not to appeal to the flesh, but just out of consideration. It's, it's my desire to try to get done a little bit earlier than normal tonight. Again, out of respect, especially for those of you that it's going to be a very busy weekend. So, But I, I really feel like the Lord has laid something on my heart tonight. So. You can, you can be seated if you'll permit me. I definitely am going to read some verses. But if you'll permit me to start without that, and I don't know if this is the best of titles, but I guess for the sake of media ministry, if nothing else, this will be our title tonight. I'm trying to be polite, not interrupt your talking. <laughs> Successful, successful ministry is not synonymous with fruit produced by the Spirit. I'll try to uh, elaborate on that, but successful ministry is not synonymous with fruit that is produced by the Spirit. This is actually later in the notes, but... I want to read it right now in this context. The Bible exposition commentary, and I'm going to be reading in a few minutes from Galatians chapter 5, and that's what this commentary is directly connected to. But it says this, It is possible for the old nature to counterfeit some of the fruit of the Spirit, but the flesh can never produce the fruit of the Spirit. Read that again. It's possible for the old nature to counterfeit some of the fruit of the Spirit, but the flesh can never produce the fruit of the Spirit. One difference is this. When the Spirit produces fruit, God gets the glory. And the Christian is not conscious of his spirituality. But when the flesh is at work, the person is inwardly proud of himself and is pleased when others compliment him. The work of the Spirit is to make us more like Christ for his glory, not for the praise of men. The work of the Spirit is to make us more like Christ for his glory, not for the praise of men. I, I don't know, there's a, there's a number of preachers here tonight, and I'm assuming I'm not the only one, but... I still, after 20 plus years of preaching, I really don't know how to respond to a compliment. Because number one, I do not want to get arrogant and a big head and God have to deal with that. <laughs> I also trust and hope and believe that anything I ever do comes from God and is not me. And so I guess I've gotten to the point where basically what I just do is just say, Thank you. And just move on. But behind that thank you is a bunch of stuff you don't hear and you don't see. 
because I, I usually there's a quick conversation after that between him and I just to make sure I, I'm not taking all that too much to heart. So don't need you to <laughs> don't need you to pop my balloon. I'm trying to pop it for myself. But it really is true. It's a great motive check when people don't get recognized for what they do and you find out the real motive behind it. Because somebody that is doing something produced more by the flesh is not very happy when they don't get recognition and glory and credit for all of the hard work that they did. That's not really where I'm going tonight, so I, but just that's kind of free. I, I want to go back more so to this first line. It is possible for the old nature to counterfeit some of the fruit of the Spirit. The Lord said to Samuel when he was sending him to go anoint David as king, I think he knew what Samuel's initial uh, leaning would be. He would probably in the flesh look at all of Jesse's sons and it would be pretty common for him to look at the eldest and pick the eldest sort of by default, but because that would appear to be the most qualified one, the most likely one. And so the Lord says to Samuel on his way to Jesse's house, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. This is a part of me just being me. I, 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 have, a, I have an artificial plant here. Aren't artificial plants wonderful things? You just need to dust them every now and then. Other than that, they're good. What's amazing about this plant, and most artificial plants, is they are perfect. They're not flawed. There's no brown leaves in here. There's no brown on any of these stems. It's all green. It's all just right. And what is going on in the root system does not matter. Because there is no root system. But from the outside and even from a distance, what you see may appear to be real. And I, I want you to think of this in this context. And I want, I want you to think of ministry. I wanted you to think of your ministry involvement, whatever that is, whatever level that is. I want you to think of that as this plant. Because if we're not careful, we spend a lot of time on surface stuff trying to make it appear to be good when in fact there's really no life. Our part of the problem though is I start to feel good about myself based on outward things that I can see that are really no measurement at all of my spirituality. I've heard, some of you've heard, and some of you probably heard worse ones than I have, but I've heard of stories of men and women of God who have stood on a platform and preached and amazing things happened in that service. And literally, I'm sorry, I know we got some younger ones here this evening, but I literally would commit acts of fornication in the, in, their, in, their, in the church office before or after service. And yet there was an amazing move of God. The leaves look really good. What was not noticed was there was nothing that was naturally producing what was seen. And if we're not careful, we can counterfeit some stuff. I know there are some of you in this place that are spiritually sensitive to the point that you would probably recognize if I walked in here and just went through the motions and faked it all in an evening. 
I don't want this to sound arrogant or proud or boastful, but there's also a whole bunch of you. I could come in here and go through the motions of doing what I'm supposed to do all through my flesh, and you'd never know it. That's one reason a bunch of us get really messed up by the music. I'm talking Christian music we listen to, the preachers we listen to. Don't ever forget God spoke through a donkey. Don't ever forget God used a donkey. Number one, don't forget when you get so arrogant that you are now God's mouthpiece. God used a donkey, he can use you. But just because somebody can sing good, can preach good, is not synonymous with what's going on in the root system. And it doesn't mean there's really fruit just because you see something outwardly. I, I, I feel very burdened in my spirit right now that there's a number of us that are, we, we've got this outward persona down really good, but we're not really bearing fruit. And, and let me just go ahead and just put you at ease. I'm not talking about fruit in the context of winning souls tonight. So we, 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 get, these, we get these artificial ministries created where it looks real. Looks genuine, but there's really nothing there. See, when something is real, what you can't see matters just as much as what you see. No fruit on the tree, cursed, you'll never produce again. What did they see? Nothing. But the moment he spoke it beneath the surface... It died. All they had to do was give what was real a little bit of time that the outward would manifest what was on the inside. The bottom line is we may for a while be able to produce some things that look real, but it will eventually catch up. My burden tonight really is not a rebuke for those that may be producing some artificial things, my burden is a concern and challenge that you and I don't become shipwrecked because we get so good at producing things that we start to ignore and completely just push to the side. You know what? There's some stuff inside that's not right and it's not what it should be, but I've kind of learned, learned how to do this. Now, I mean, it, what's crazy is you can, you can be a preacher, you can be a pastor, you can be a Christian music artist, you can, go get to, you can go have an affair and just give a quick apology and keep going. As long as you can preach real good and sing real good. And now, I, 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 some of you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Some of you will have no clue. And sorry for those of you that know and glad that some of you don't know, but... Some now say that they've gotten some of the greatest lessons about grace from the one they fell into adultery with. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. If something born in the flesh seems to be producing something in the spirit, it is a counterfeit. I don't care how real it may look. Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. You don't have to raise your hand. How many, in fact, don't raise your hand. How many of you, you're just struggling, trying so hard to, to stop sinning, and you got things you're doing you know you shouldn't do. I, I got to stop doing this. Listen to what Paul says. Walk in the Spirit. And when you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of your flesh. Quit trying to stop sinning. Quit trying to avoid sin. 
Learn how to walk in the Spirit. You learn how to walk in the Spirit, the result is you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. I, I remind you, Galatians, the book of Galatians, this is not a ev Sunday morning evangelistic message Paul is preaching. He is talking to the saints. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. For of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Man, we do a, we, there, people do a good job in 2016 of cutting and not pasting. They just cut. Don't like that. Cut it out. Don't like that. Get rid of that. If you do these things, you, you I don't know. I, I mean, I know this is King James, old King, whatever, but that's pretty plain to me. If you do these things, you will not inherit the kingdom. I, I don't need anybody to break all that down to me. I don't need, that's not some mystery that I need explained. There's, a, there's some things there that if you do these things, you're not going to get the kingdom. Hang on, you know what's coming in a few minutes. I'll read those things to you from the Message Bible. Because some of you are looking at that list going, well, you're, you're kind of like the man that came to Jesus. What do I have to do to inherit eternal life? You're, I'm all right. I, I don't do that. No, oh, hold on. Wait a minute. We're going to make it a little more plain in just a minute. These are the works. Everybody say works. Notice it's works, plural. Works, 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 plural. These are the works of the flesh. But the fruit, hello, what is works? Plural. What is fruit? Singular. I think we subconsciously think works of the flesh and fruits of the Spirit. And so we go down the list of the fruits of the Spirit and check off several that we're good at and a few that we don't have and we write it off, well, you know, I, I got two-thirds of them okay. No, 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 no. Paul said, the fruit. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I, was, well, I, I came across this guy on Instagram the other day, and I, I'm so tempted to try and see if it gets me any better result. But I, I'm telling this whole, I, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not trying to be critical or judge, but this... This whole, I mean, he, he's got, I, he, he's really good at his. I've heard it, Brother Middleton, a little different, but he's got this, <gasps> <gasps> and he's talking along, <gasps> <gasps> and I mean, he'll, he'll kind of get almost at normal speed, and it's almost like he remembers, <gasps> 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 so if you need a, <gasps> <gasps> every now and then to make you think I'm anointed, <gasps> Our problem is we get so caught up in some of the <gasps> we don't even realize he ain't even saying anything. I, I am getting so sick and tired of seeing on Facebook and Instagram and other places. These, these guys must get the message from the same place all the time. If I hear one more time that everything you're going through is just the devil fighting you from your destiny and it's all about to break through, I, I'm ready to throw up. Because <gasps> some of us got stuff that ain't the devil fighting us because some of us don't need the devil to fight us. We create enough of our own chaos. We don't need him getting involved. The fruit 
of the Spirit. The word fruit there metaphorically means that which originates or comes from something. That which originates or comes from something. An effect, a result. That's why the fruit of the Spirit is not about you sitting and looking at the list and deciding, I really got to work on this. You can't produce fruit of yourself. There has to be something else working in you that produces. And I've come to challenge us tonight. Let's don't get so caught up in creating things that we miss the fact there's nothing working in me producing what the Word says is the fruit. My ministry is not the fruit I taught it a week or two ago whatever I guess a couple of weeks now our last split service in in Genesis chapter 1 God the Bible says that God put Adam in the garden he placed the man in the garden it also says that God created the garden and then put Adam in the garden but the the other thing is it says that he put the man in there but the word man there is not for the word male or female it's mankind And so what that says to me is that God has given every one of us purpose. He's given every one of us something to do. But if we're not careful, we can get so focused on what it is God's given us to do that we forget there's some stuff that ought to be working inside of me to produce fruit. Because what I do in and of itself is not the fruit. The contrast, the Bible Exposition Commentary says, the contrast between works and fruit is important. A machine in a factory works and turns out a product, but it could never manufacture fruit. Fruit must grow out of a life, and in the case of the believer, it is the life of the Spirit. When you think of works, you think of effort, labor, strain, and toil. When you think of fruit, you think of beauty, quietness, the unfolding of life. And so the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And Peter, Peter talks to us about that there are things that we are supposed to add to. It's my understanding from my own study as well as what I've heard others communicate and teach that also from what I can tell seems to be correct. That, that, is, that is actually intended to be somewhat of a successive progression. That you build, what does it add to your faith? Virtue. To your virtue, knowledge. Knowledge and on and on. So I can't remember all the list. Add to this, this. Don't start building walls if you haven't laid a foundation. Don't try to get shingles without a roof. He said, add these things, add to this, this. But Paul says the fruit is the fruit. It's not a matter of, well, I'll produce some apples this season and Some grapes, the next thing. He says, the fruit, all-inclusive. Oh, hallelujah. All-inclusive of the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, we let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. I think it was on, I think I saw it on Facebook. Maybe if you've seen it, that's where it was. <laughs> Seems like it was a little while ago that I saw it, but I, I think it was in California. With all of the drought they've experienced out there in a lot of areas, they, they actually have these, these people that have created a business that will come out and will spray your lawn green. So that you have the appearance of a healthy lawn. 
You know, the problem is when you do something like that, you are now not facing the reality of what is really there or not there. I don't know about you, but I, 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 I went the other day, Monday, we were going to cook out, and I, I went by a little stand on Baydale Drive to get some tomatoes, and, and they had them where the stem part comes out. That was down, and what I think is the bottom, I guess, that was up. And all of them on the bottom looked okay, but as soon as you turned them over, there were flaws. There were flaws in every single one of them. There was no absolutely perfect tomato because the bottom line, this ought to take a little bit of pressure off some folks here. The bottom line is if something is real and alive, it will have flaws. If you are trying to portray that you are flawless, you are a fake. The only thing flawless is fakes. We got some flawless lemons. I, what oranges, I think, in the conference room. We got some flawless oranges in the conference room. Kitchenette. If you like oranges, if you like the taste of oranges, don't get excited. They look like the perfect orange. And the problem with the perfect orange is there is no value or worth other than its decorative value. Everything that is alive and has something of worth and value to give is going to be flawed. Somebody ought to go. Whew. Some of the greatest athletes are not those that are perfect at their sport. I know most of you don't play golf, and most people that don't play golf, if you see golf on TV, you just, that's the most boring thing I've ever seen. The other thing most people say is, I could do that. <laughs> I just sitting a ball down on the tee, I could do that. Let me tell you something. Would you, if you feel that way, please tell me. Because the next time I am depressed and having a bad day, I am calling you. And I am taking you to Severna Park or Crofton, whichever is more convenient. I am going to buy you a bucket of golf balls. And I am just going to sit and laugh my head off at you while you make an idiot out of yourself. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, I promise you. <laughs> And then the moment you think you're a great expert on the driving range, I'll take you the next step, and that is out on the course. And we'll go by Walmart and get a bunch of cheap balls because we don't want to give you the real good ones because you're going to lose most of them. There are some things that are considered to be the fundamentals of a golf swing. And there's some guys, you can watch them on, you can see their videos or watch them play. And man, they have, they have the perfect swing, the perfect fundamentals. They got it down. And they do okay, but you know what? There's some guys that have been really successful and made a lot of money that have what are called swing flaws. But what they've learned to do is repeat the flaw. <laughs> Accept it and work with it. There's some guys that play in the NBA that do not have the model form when it comes to a jump shot. And yet they are extremely successful because they've learned to do it. May not be perfect. I'm not talking about sin right now. If you go in there and you're getting all kind of excuses to sin, you need to wake up. We, that's... <laughs> There are, there are some things in you that are flaws because you're real. You ever notice this as well? There is no, there, there's nothing, I mean, when it comes to nature, plants, trees, whatever, they go through seasons and cycles. Somehow we have this anticipation that I am going to reach this place where there is constantly all kinds of fruit on my tree. 
The only way there's going to always be fruit on your tree is if you go steal somebody's fruit and then hang it on your tree. There's going to be some seasons in your life, no matter how spiritual you are. And in fact, I sort of come to the conclusion, the more spiritual you are, the more drastic some of those seasons will be. I know I'm not, surely I'm not the only one that's gotten into one of those grooves one time and you thought, I have finally gotten into the ultimate final groove of spirituality and from now until heaven is going to be smooth sailing. And the moment you start thinking it, the wheels come off. Boy, my prayer life is so good and consistent and I've gotten in the flow and it just is absolutely... Why? Because it's not fake. If it's fake, it can be and look the same all the time. But if it's real, it's not always going to look the same. It's not always going to be the same. There's going to be some changes that take place from time to time. There's going to be some brown in your leaves every now and then. They're not always going to be completely green. Here it is. It is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex, a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage. Frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness. Trinket gods, magic show religion, paranoid loneliness, cutthroat competition, don't have any of that. All-consuming yet never satisfied wants, a brutal temper and impotence to love or be loved. Divided homes. Boy, I sure know how to preach. I sure know how to pray. I sure know how to sing. I sure know how to play. I sure know how to intercede, but my home is a disaster. My family is falling apart. Divided homes and divided lives small-minded and lopsided pursuits. The vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival. The vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival. Everybody here that is an elder is not a rival of another elder. Everybody that's involved in music ministry is not a rival of somebody else involved in music ministry. But the works of the flesh, this is the kinds of things that come as a result of that. Uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions. Well, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I don't smoke, don't you drink alcohol, but I can't ever put this thing down. Let's see if anybody's posted anything else in the last five minutes since I checked the last time. I, some of y'all need to follow. I'm not trying to whatever. Y'all to follow my example on Instagram. I got like 400 and something followers now, and I think I follow like 40 something people. Some of y'all have no idea what that means. You know the beauty of following 40 something people? You can go hours and hours at a time and nothing changes. I've learned there's no need to check it every 20 minutes. I've actually thought sometimes, you know, I ought to add a few more feed people so I can get a few more action on my feed. <laughs> then I'm like, you know what? I, I don't need. Let me, tell you, let me tell you something, whatever. It's not just the rantings of a preacher here. You can do a little bit of research online and find out it is now becoming an accepted uh, addiction. 
they are now putting these things and technology in the category of addiction. When you, oh man, I didn't know I wasn't getting on this, but here we are. I told you I'm going to be me. I'll just be me. <laughs> when you can't sit at a dinner table without this in one hand, you, my friend, have a problem. When you can't put it down and walk away and leave it in a spot, you know what, how, did, how many of you, don't raise your hand if you did, you messed me up, so. How many of you walked around all the time with the, obviously you didn't with the landline attached to the cord. <laughs> but how many of you walked around with the cordless phone in your pocket all the time? There may be a couple of you that did, but most of us didn't. Dear God, now somehow. What do you say? What do you say? Where was that? Oh, I skipped ahead. Skip ahead. Uncontrollable addictions. Oh, I feel a meddling spirit and I'm trying to move on. Uncontrollable. I, I, if, if you've been one of the ones I've counseled, I'm not shooting at you because I can say I have multiple times now in the last several years sat and counseled couples who sit and one of the biggest frustration of one spouse or the other is they're always on their phone. And I just got to tell you, there ain't nobody in this room tonight that is so important that you need this on your person all the time. That's part of the reason somebody created voicemail. I don't know if you operate how I don't answer every single call, especially if I don't recognize the number. And then whether I recognize the number or not, if it's important enough, you will leave me a message. If you're calling me and it wasn't important enough to leave a message, then I won't use the word that gets used outside of church, but it was an anatomy dial, perhaps. I don't know, you accidentally pushed, pushed a button to call me. Some of you are like, what? Y'all gonna have to fix this with your kids when you go home, a butt dial. Can y'all bleep that from the recording? Sorry, it was an accident. So, Oh, man, I had, that was not in, so. This isn't the first time I have warned you, you know. If you use your freedom from this way, you will not inherit God, God's kingdom. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives much the same way the fruit, that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life. Do you pray three or four hours a day but, can't, but hate life? Are you a prayer warrior, but your wish and prayer is, God, take me out of here. Take me, I can't. Serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things. A sense of compassion in the heart and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitment, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Legalism is helpless to bring this about. It only gets in the way. That's why it's not about a bunch of rules and regulations. It's not about just lining up to the doctrines of a church. It's about letting the spirit on the inside produce something inside and outside because legalism is helpless. Among those who belong to Christ, everything connected with getting our own way and mindlessly responding to what everyone else calls necessities is killed off for good. It's crucified. No, oh, I've touched on this already, and again, if you want notes, I've put a bunch of stuff in here tonight if you want it later. Back to this point, the word fruit is singular. 
indicating that these qualities constitute a unity, all of which, all of which, all of which should be found in a believer who lives under the control of the Spirit. In an ultimate sense, this fruit is simply the life of Christ lived out in a Christian. I'm, I'm just going gonna, gonna to say it plain. Some of this is Holy Ghost and discernment, and some of this is natural discernment. <laughs> but there are too many of us that have all kinds of wonderful, great ministries, but we tolerate in our lives the absence of what Paul said is the fruit of the Spirit. I got this all looking good because this looks good. I do ministry well. I, I, I do what I'm called to do good. I can ignore the fact that the fruit of the Spirit that should be produced in my life is completely absent. Or, again, well, I got some of that, I got that, I got a little bit of that, I, I do pretty good at that. He didn't say it's the fruits. He said these things are the fruit, singular. There's some more about that if you want to read it. I'm not going to take time, and it's really small purposefully because I wasn't going to get into it, but just listen to a little bit of this. This is the things he says is a part of the fruit. This is, this is, this is the commentary. He says, long-suffering is long-mindedness. It is bearing with the frailties and provocations of others. Bearing with, not fighting back. From the consideration that God has borne long with ours. Isn't it amazing how impatient we are with people in the very areas God has been so patient with us? It's like the story of the man that was forgiven. How many, what was he forgiven? 10,000 talents or what? And he goes and finds the man that had a much, much smaller debt to him. And he ignores all that he was forgiven of and wants the guy with a lot less to pay up. And that if he had not, we should have been speedily consumed, bearing up also, you can't read it up there and I can't read it on here, so we're in good suit. We're, we're, we have some, something in common. <laughs> Bearing up also through all the troubles and difficulties of life without murmuring or repining, submitting cheerfully to every dispensation of God's providence and thus deriving benefit from every occurrence. Go back to the first one, love. What does Paul say in chapter 13, 1st or 2nd Corinthians? Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, I give my body to be burned. I give all that I have to the poor. If I don't have love, I'm a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Gentleness, benignity, it's kindness or tolerance, of affability, pleasantness, pleasantness, pleasantness. <sighs> pleasantness. You can hikamoho shy all you want to. In the prayer room, outside of it, the fruit of the Spirit is you should be a pleasant person. I, 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 I know I'm, I'm doing exactly what I tried to say I wouldn't do. I'm doing it in a very roundabout way, I know. I know some of you, you just, you, you're here tonight, it's Thursday night, brother, right? We're supposed to be going deep. You're supposed to be bringing revelatory things that we have never heard before because we are the dedicated, committed, short-tempered, no patience, short-suffering. But let's go deep. We got crumbling lives. 
because we keep painting and propping and decorating what is not real to make it look good to feel better about ourselves and ignore the fact the Spirit is not producing in me what it should be producing. A very, no, no, I'm reading, I'm reading. Gentleness, a very rare grace. Often wanting in many who have a considerable share of Christian excellence. A good education and polished manners when brought under the influence of the grace of God will bring out this grace with great effect. The fruit the byproduct of the Spirit is not your worship. Oh, hallelujah. I'm almost done. The fruit of the Spirit is not your intercession. The fruit of the Spirit is not your musical ability or your singing ability. The fruit of the Spirit is not your preaching ability. It's not your teaching ability. That is not the fruit of the Spirit. Paul said the fruit, singular, of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. I, 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 want, I, want you to, I want you to do a little... Fruit inspection right now. Do a little fruit inspection right now. Not fruits. Because again, I think most of us could go through that list that Paul gave us and I don't know, some of us, we might be doing pretty good at about two-thirds of it. Maybe some of you got almost all of them. No. No, this wasn't a recommendation of various things that you ought to have in your life. This was a list of what encompasses fruit. Well, I got gentleness, but I, I'm not very long-suffering, but I'll, I'll, just work, I'll just hone in on my gentleness. No patience, no tolerance for people's mistakes and failures, but... I, no, 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 no. The fruit. I, I, maybe you get something different out of what Paul said here, but what I get out of what Paul said is that every believer, every believer, every believer should be manifesting those things in their lives. It is not a buffet. I'll do some of that, but you know what? That's just not my personality. I'm just not that way. I, 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 I failed to read it somewhere, and I meant to read it. I don't know if I could find it. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I still got a few minutes to quit early. Here it is. That which the Holy Spirit produces is not without design. Evidently that the apostle uses the word spirit here as denoting that these things do not flow from our own nature. These things do not flow from our own nature. The vices above enumerated are the proper works or result of the operations of the human heart. The works of the flesh, that is the normal product of the human heart. The virtues which he enumerates are produced by a foreign influence, the agency of the Holy Spirit. Hence, Paul does not trace them to our own hearts even when renewed. Well, I've been born again, so I, no, 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 no. It is still the Spirit. 
It's not you. It's not what's in you producing the fruit. There has to be an outside agency that is working in your life to produce these things. He says that they are to be regarded as the proper result of the Spirit's operation on the soul. That tells me that if I, not pastor right, not senior pastor, not senior executive, elder, whatever else I may be, just me, David, just David, if I look at those things that Paul says are the fruit, and I realize that I am lacking in some areas, if I'm going to be honest with myself, I have to then acknowledge the, the Spirit, not a Spirit, the Spirit is not having the proper impact on my life. Because if the Spirit, if the Spirit, capital S, if the Spirit is having the impact on your life it is supposed to be having, the things that Paul said are the fruit of the Spirit should be being manifested in your life. And whatever excuses or reasons I come up with as to why they're not there, all of them are totally invalid. Because the result of the operation of the Spirit in my life should be the fruit that Paul talked about. I'm afraid that too many times we become great preachers, we become great musicians, we become great singers, we become great care group leaders, we become great soul winners. We become all these great, wonderful things. And just ignore that at the root, there's a bunch that's lacking. You know the problem with when you create it, you're under pressure to maintain it. If I create the persona of me that you see, I am under pressure to maintain that. But when I'm relying upon the Spirit to produce in my life the things that need to be produced, I can be at peace with the fact there's sometimes you're not going to see me producing everything I ought to produce. As long as I am in the season that God has me in, sorry, I'm not running up the Safeway and buying a whole bag of apples and hanging them on my tree. What's really sad is some of us are in the middle of winter, not a leaf on our trees, and we got fruit hanging all over. You're in the deadest part of your life right now. You're hanging stuff all over you to make everybody think. And what you're doing is actually thwarting the season that God has, in, has you in for a very specific purpose. You may not like winter. You may not like what goes on in winter. But for the health of the trees and the plants in this area, we need to go through winter. There is something that happens in what appears to be the deadness of winter. And it's not the seasons of life where you, everything looks so great and healthy. You know what's amazing? I'm, I'm quitting. i got to hurry up and quit. Otherwise, I'm not going to get you all. It's just, I know, I know most of you are old and wise enough. You, you realized this a long time ago. But it dawned on me just a couple of years ago as I was admiring the, the foliage of the fall. What we consider, what many of us consider, I, I, I think winter is still my favorite season, but I am, I'm of the opinion, especially when there's no snow on the ground, to cover all the deadness that fall is, I think, the prettiest season. But it dawned on me what we consider to be so beautiful is death. You ever thought about that? Oh my God, the oranges and the reds and the, oh, the yellows is so beautiful. Wait a minute. It's dead. It's dying. 
You're snapping all kinds of pictures of death, <laughs> considering it to be so beautiful. Maybe it was just God's kindness that since you're about to go into the dark, barren days of winter, I'm just going to give you something beautiful to kind of push you through. Our problem is we get in one of those beautiful seasons of our life and we think we have now arrived in paradise at the destination. And next thing we know, about as quick as the season started, the season changes. You, it don't matter how much you repent. It doesn't matter how much you pray. When it's time for the season to change, the season is changing. Because God's trying to produce some things in you. And for God to produce everything he wants to produce in us, we can't live in the same season where everything always looks perfect. I think I'm trying to do, I was about to ask you to stand, but it'll take me five minutes to get you back. So you're sitting, but figuratively you're standing because I'm about to dismiss you. So there's hope all of my ramblings, and I forgot my point I was about to make. Uh, I, I, I trust that one of two things would happen here tonight. My hope is that as a result of this for some of you, as I've already said, there would be a whew, little bit of sigh of relief that not always going to look perfect, not always going to be the greenest, not always going to be the most healthiest because there's seasons you go through. You got to accept it. The flip side is, it's my hope that some of you would be challenged tonight because I, I don't, I'm not meaning this to, to be critical or judgmental. I don't mean it that way at all. Ultimately, God alone knows. I'm re I really, out of c concern, out of burden, that there's some of us here that are doing a really great job of producing something that looks really good. But we have no fruit. Excuse me, let me rephrase that based on what Paul said. We don't have the fruit. We've got some wonderful looking stuff on the outside, but love, joy, peace, they're absent but we're doing a really good job at maintaining appearances. At some point, it's going to catch up. You're better off acknowledging now, you know what, there's some things lacking. Rather than continuing to try to put on a front to make it look like all is well, I need to get to the source of my issue so that the Spirit can produce in my life what needs to be produced. Would you just bow your heads for a moment, if you would, please? Father, I am asking you to help us tonight, all of us, me included, God. It seems to be a trap that we fall into. That we can get caught up in things that are visible in making those things look good, appear to be good, when things that are ultimately to be produced by your Spirit in and through our lives are lacking, we can just keep moving along and disregard the lack of that fruit as we continue to maintain appearances in our life. I pray that you would help every one of us as individual believers tonight, God, as individual disciples, whatever position, whatever role, whatever area of ministry we may fulfill, you would help us to not ever ignore or disregard what should be the fruit of your Spirit working in our lives, to not justify a lack of that fruit because of certain successes and accomplishments that I may be having. Help us to be willing to inspect, to realize, 
to acknowledge when there are some things that should be there that are lacking. Not that we can try to fix it because we can't produce it, but to get ourselves in the right position, in the right relationship with you, God, so that your spirit, the spirit, can produce the fruit that is supposed to be in our lives. I pray you would help each one of us, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.